Hello, Kinsey Rising here, owner of Take the Lead Dog Training, and I'm gonna do a quick tutorial on your Easy Educator 902, which is your two dog unit. Um, I'll make it as quick as I can, but just wanna go over all of the functions and features so that you're familiar with this unit and know how to use it. Um, so this is your remote. It does come with two collars or receivers. How to turn it on. On the back of your remote, there is a red dot here. On the side of each collar, there's a red dot there. Those are your magnets. When you touch it to the magnet, it turns it on. You will see the light go green. Um, and so now that's how we have the collar piece turned on. This piece is still currently turned off. Um, so on the side, you're gonna see a button that has on and off engraved in it. So I'm gonna push and hold that button for about two seconds. Now this piece is on and these are on as well. You will see that um, it, they blink green every few seconds to let you know that they're turned on and charged. There's a little light up here that blinks too. Um, if those are blinking orange or red, that means the battery is dying and it's time to plug them in and charge them. Um, unless you're activating it, it does um, turn on and blink red to let you know it's sending signal and receiving signal. We'll go over that more in detail. To charge it on the back of your remote, there is a flap here to access the port to charge that. Underneath each of your collars, there is a um, port right here to plug this piece in to charge. There's also your serial number for registration of warranty there. Um, your charging piece is pretty cool. This pops out to plug into the wall. Um, it does come with a USB that pops in right here. This piece is for your remote. And then because we have two collars, they send you a splitter, which you would just connect to the end here so that you can charge all three pieces at the same time. So that's pretty great. From a fully dead battery to a full charge, it shouldn't take more than two hours. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the buttons and features. There's a lot of buttons on this, um, which can be confusing, but once you have it figured out, um, it, it's actually got a lot of great features. So first things first is we're gonna go over what's on your screen. Um, so you have the letters M, C, V, and T. So that stands for momentary stim, continuous stim, vibration, and tone. Um, I personally only train with the stim because I find the vibration because you cannot adjust the levels on this model. It's too intense for most dogs. Um, so I just avoid that and I use the, uh, the stim. And then the tone, same kind of concept. Um, oftentimes it's just a little bit too much, too irritating for the dogs. So I just stick with uh, the stimulation sensation, which I can fine tune to be very, very soft. Um, so programming, here it comes pre-programmed with these buttons on the front being vibration. So if I push it, you can hear it vibrating. Um, they are color coded. So the red buttons connect to the collar with the red strap, then the black buttons uh, coordinate with the collar with the black strap. So that makes it pretty easy for tracking which dog you are speaking to with the remote. Um, so let's say we don't want our front buttons to be vibration, which I personally don't. You're gonna turn your dial all the way down to zero. And on the side here, you're gonna see, here's your on and off button. Above that is the only button that has the letter P engraved on it. P stands for program. That is our programming button. If we would like to change the feature of a collar, I'm gonna push and hold program while I toggle through. I'm selecting this button on the front, which goes to the black collar, and you can see that the letters are changing. So I would like this to be momentary. So I'm gonna stop when it lands on M, and I'm gonna let go of the program button. So now if I push that, that is sending momentary stim to the collar. I'd like to also reprogram the red collar in the same manner. So I'm gonna push and hold my program button here first. So program first, followed by toggling through the letters with my red button here. I'm gonna end on momentary as well. So um, both of these are now momentary. These other buttons on the side came pre-programmed as momentary as well. I would like these to be continuous. So again, I'm gonna to go to my program button, push and hold, toggle through until it's on continuous, push and hold program, toggle through, now that's also on continuous. So now we have for the black collar, momentary on the front, continuous on the side, same for the red collar, momentary on front, continuous on the side. Now that I'm done programming, um, vibration and tone are no longer 
programmed to be active on the colors, they will still show up on the screen except for when you push your button. When you push your button, everything else disappears except for what you're activating. So this is momentary on the one dog collar. So there's one D at top, two D at the bottom. So if I push the red button, the two D stays there. That's your second dog on the unit. Um, so one D and two D, they are blinking, you may notice. With our dial, it has from one to 100 levels. When you get to 100, it says hi. Um, so we're just going to pick a level here and let's pretend we have a dog that works at level 11. That's our second dog, let's say. So if I want to lock in my level, um, just in case uh, I need to range levels with the other dog, what I'm going to do is push my program button and then push the button to the dog that I want to lock. So let's say our red dog at, um, I read that wrong, we're at a 41, <laughs> looked like an 11 from back here. So that's a really high number, but this is a hypothetical situation. Um, usually I would work a dog on like a 10 or a 12 or something like that. So let's say um, dog number one is a 41, which is really high, but um, so they're now locked in. So every time I push that button, it goes to that 41 and then it goes back to when I release whatever is on the screen. You're gonna see the two dog um, unit is not blinking anymore. That means you're locked. So that's your locking in at that 41 that I chose. Um, and then let's say we wanted to lock in dog number two at 11. So again, I'm gonna push program first, followed by the front facing button for about two seconds. Now one dog is locked in at 11. And I can go back to the second dog still at 41. Um, the tricky thing is, is the numbers on the screen will adjust based on where the dial is at. But if you're locked in, you can trust that it's always going to go back to what you locked it in at. Um, to unlock, it's the same way. Your program button, push and hold and select the dog you would like to unlock. Then if it's unlocked, whatever is on your display is what's going to be activated. Um, so I'm going to unlock both. Now we can have both of the dogs um, <clears throat> will just be activated to whatever's on the screen. Hopefully that made sense. So locking and unlocking is program, selecting which color you want, and then you do this first, followed by this for about two seconds to lock and unlock. Um, battery si symbol is your battery life just for this piece. So um, this could say fully charged and your colors could be completely dead. So you do want to um, keep an eye on that, knowing that the collars, the little light here is going to blink orange or red um, when the battery is going down, except for when you activate your button. So momentary versus continuous. So we've programmed this to be momentary on the front, continuous on the side. Momentary stimulation means even if I push and hold that button, you see it lights up red just for a moment. That's just sending a moment of stimulation to the contact points. Versus the continuous, if I push and hold, it's continuously sending that stimulation until I release it. It does have a cut off of about 10 to 15, or sorry, 10 to 12 seconds. Um, even if I continue holding that button, it's gonna automatically turn off the stimulation just like it did there. If you needed it longer than that, you would simply reapply the button. Um, and then you're gonna notice this little red light up here it says I'm sending signal, this light says I'm receiving signal. Um, the other thing that I want to mention too is your flashlight. So your on and off button to turn this piece on and off is also how you turn your lights on. Um, but it's a little bit tricky with the two dog system because you have to select which collar you're turning on. So you're going to be using the side buttons. It does not work with the front buttons. You're going to push and hold your on and off button and then push and hold the side button. And that just turned this collar on. So I'm going to do that again with the red collar. I'm going to push the on and off, followed by the side button. And I apologize, it's a tap, not a push and hold. So push and hold on and off, tap the, the side button. So on once is it turns it on flashing. Um, second push is on solid. Third push, it turns the flashlight off. Um, which is really cool because you could have one collar on blinking and one on solid so that in the dark in your yard you can tell which dog is which by which one you have selected to be blinking or on solid. So for flashlight, your on and off button with the side buttons. For locking and unlocking your levels, it's your program button with the front facing buttons. 
um, and then your dial up here to adjust your levels. Remembering that when you lock and unlock your levels, your 1D and 2D, if they're blinking, you're unlocked. If they're solid, you're locked. Um, and then for reprogramming, you can have, you'll have to turn it all the way down to zero. You would use your program button and toggle through on each button to which feature you would like to be activated. Um, charging is on the back as well as your magnet to turn your collars on and off and your charging port underneath here too. Um, just like with every e-collar, a couple of things about the contact points. Um, I believe they have nickel in the end of these contact points in the middle. Some dogs have an allergic reaction to that, so keep an eye out for any redness or rashes that may develop. If that is the case, um, then you can go onto their website and they have uh, hypoallergenic contact points that you can get to resolve that issue. The other thing is if you leave it on your dog for too long, it can develop a pressure sore simply from um, sitting on your dog's neck. So definitely make sure that you rotate which side that you put it on the dog's neck um, to make sure that we prevent that from happening. And you don't leave it on your dog for more than eight to 12 hours at a time um, so that they, they can rest. Um, if they do get a pressure sore, simply give them a break from their e-collar training. Keep the pressure sore nice and clean um, and let it heal up before you proceed with any training. Some other things that this comes with, you do get a user manual, um, which is a great reference guide for anything you need here. Um, and then a couple other things that you get is a lanyard, a belt clip, which you can install on the back of your remote, and some extra contact points that are a little bit longer, just in case you have a dog that has longer fur like a German Shepherd. Um, this piece here will screw on and off your contact points if you need to swap them out. This round piece here is for popping off the yellow shell if you need to get to the inside or you're just switching out the colors. And then this clear piece here is a um, light tester if you put the collar contact points underneath here and activate the stem. There's a little light bulb that will light up to let you know that it is actually working or not. Um, or you can just put it on your hand and feel it for yourself. Hopefully this was helpful to get you familiar with how to use your two dog system. Um, it's really nice to have one remote to two dogs so that you're not trying to toggle between two remotes or remembering who's who and it's color coordinated. Um, but it does have some slightly different features than the one dog unit, which can be a little confusing if you don't know um, how to navigate that. So best of luck with your training and uh, I hope this was helpful and we will see you next time.